Ready. All right, this special meeting of the Aurora City Council is hereby called to order. Will the clerk please call the roll. Alderman Yamas. Here. Alderman Garza. Here. Alderman Masiakos. Present. Alderman Donnell. Here. Alderman Franco. Here. Alderman Seville. Present. Alderman Hart Burns. Here. Alderman Smith. Here. Alderman Bug. Present. Alderman Lachi. Here. Alderman Jenkins. Here. Alderman O'Connor. Here. And Mayor Irvin. Present. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of Wednesday, April 1st, 2020 City Council meeting? So, so moved. moved. There's been a motion by Alderman Jenkins. May I have a second? Second. second. And there's been a second by Alderman Hart Burns. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Mayor. I, be if, I believe Alderman Messiakos will abstain as he was not present at that meeting. Is that correct, Alderman Messiakos? Correct, Mayor. All Thank right, you. One, abs one abstention. Motion carries by voice vote. Um, <clears throat> we do have presentation tonight. We have a presentation from the Mayor's Office of Communications regarding COVID-19. Uh, it was three weeks ago on Tuesday, March 24th, that we announced our first COVID cases and sadly our first death in Aurora. Three weeks later, we have topped the 200 mark of cases at over 208 today, maybe even more. We have been communicating this information daily on social media and through our website at www.aurora-il.org slash health. Tonight, I am announcing we are launching a new phase of that site to include a dashboard that captures that information for the for our community. Uh, if Clayton Muhammad uh, can walk us through the new dashboard, which will be launched uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, April 15th. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, and good evening to the City Council. We're going to pull up a new dashboard. When we started producing our numbers three weeks ago today, we launched out with three COVID cases and one death. Uh, of course, most of us could have expected as the Department of Public Health um, came on board and our four counties came on board, uh, different ways of disseminating the information just has happened month uh, and the growth has happened. So you see new dashboards popping up from the state level and new dashboards popping up from the county level, which allows us now to gather information, scraping it right from websites. For a number of weeks, the information we received were really from personal calls to the department uh, uh, health directors and they were calling in with numbers. Now it's all electronic. So we work with IT, shout out again to IT department, we're really just uh, buckling down and pulling this together for us. As we come on our, our third week, uh, we will be launching this uh, tomorrow. And so what you'll see here is the new dashboard still under aurora-il.org backslash health. But when the community is here, including the aldermen, um, you'll get that same information that we've had for three weeks on our site, just in a, in a much more dynamic format. And so you'll see at the, the top, uh, information about Illinois. And these are numbers from last night. We'll update uh, each evening. We like to update ours in the evening to let all the numbers circulate through from the state and the counties. Uh, so you'll see our confirmed cases, our confirmed deaths. What is unique about this, and, and, and we're happy to grow into this, is now cases are disaggregated by zip codes. And you're able now to see the whole picture of Aurora. So before I go to the zip code side, you can see the county the Arcane, DuPage, Kendall, and Will, you'll always be able to see what cases are active there, deaths that are active there. Um, but now you can come and just drill down into the zip codes of Aurora. So we can start at 60506. You'll see the um, and when you click on 60506, uh, you can click Mr. Muhammad, yes, let me sir. just stop you just for one second. All the aldermen that are, if you're not speaking, can you do me a favor and put your... Uh, uh, mute on so we don't hear background noise. Thank you, Mayor. Go ahead and continue, Mr. Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you we drill down by zip code, you'll not only get the cases by zip code, we now have gender, race, and age categories broken down by zip code. As long as the county health department report that to the state health department, we're pulling that all right down for our city. So you can see where we are with 60506. Coming to the east side, you see where we are with 60505. And if you just jump to the far east side, you see where we are with 60504. Of course, there are other zip codes that uh, encapsulate Aurora, 60503 and 02. 
Um, and we have some portions of an Oswego zip code, some portions of a general Naperville zip code as we look at some of the southern borders. Some of those numbers we'll have to put in by hand when those cases are um, uh, given to us. And so you'll see those numbers on the left-hand side and on the bottom part of the screen, uh, the charts, again, that disaggregate by gender, race, age for the whole city and for the individual zip codes. And then finally, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see our total cases in Aurora over time. So you can see what we reported three weeks ago with the first cases and where we are now three weeks later. Uh, and I believe the count for today will be 223 <coughs> and five deaths when we uh, update later tonight. That's the orange line graph. And the blue bar graph, those are individual new cases per day. So again, the state and the county health departments all update at different times per day. For instance, DuPage County updates at 11 a.m. The state will update by 2.30 p.m. Kane County updates at 4.30 p.m. And so we just do our due diligence and we'll wait till those numbers are all pulled in and we'll do our, what we call a, a text creation of the sites in the evenings, push that out through social media. Then of course, all of you get your report in your email boxes as well. And so we will roll out this dashboard as the first phase of our new COVID site. And then uh, our next city council meeting will have additional information to show you from this dashboard, how just with the click of a tab, individuals can see hospitals and nursing homes and food banks and restaurants, everything from this base page, taking the information from our current website and making it again in a much more dynamic, user-friendly and vision-friendly format for the community um, as we continue to process through this uh, COVID crisis. Okay. And that was the update for uh, the dashboard, Mayor. Are there any questions? Any, any questions for Mr. Muhammad about the dashboard or its use? Thank you, sir. With no further questions, we will uh, go to the public comment portion. Madam Clerk, do we have any members of the public wishing to offer public comment? We do, Mr. Mayor. Uh, will you read the preamble, please, ma'am? Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, all persons shall be permitted an opportunity to address public officials under the rules established and recorded by the council. Under our rules, any person may address the city council for up to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes allotted for all public comment. No person other than the timekeeper or the chair for the purpose of maintaining order may interrupt a person recognized for public comment during his or her comments. Members of the city council shall not engage with nor respond to a speaker during the time set aside for public comment. Staff is directed to follow up with members of the public with respect to any concerns raised during public comment within the scope of the city's authority following the adjournment of this meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the first person to offer public comment this evening? Ms. Terry Wojtek. Mr. Anderson, is Ms. Wojtek uh, on? She is, yes. she's unmuted. Yep. Can, can you Ms. hear me? Yes, Ms. Wojtek, we can hear you. You have three minutes to speak. I am keeping the time. Your time has started right now, go ahead. Okay, my name is Terry Voidick. I reside at 2651 Prairie View Lane, South Aurora, Illinois, 60502. I am here on behalf of Big Woods Marmion Neighborhood Group and because I care very much for our city and our community. I speak before you today because I am concerned about that due to COVID-19, we may start losing our small businesses. While I have some uncertainty for the large big box stores and the many franchises in the far northeast corner of Aurora, they most likely will survive. It is the small business owner that will be hit the hardest during these trying times, and many will not recover financially. The council may already be aware of the money that the city of Chicago has set aside for its small business owners. My question is, since we are the second largest city in the state of Illinois and second to none, does the city of Aurora have any solid plan in place to help our small businesses, our small business owners stay afloat? Businesses such as Pub 56 and the Double Yoke and others have become part of our community and have often supported the local Ward 1 and Ward 10 community with donations and contributions. Currently, the Double Yoke has been helping those in need and has been providing meals for families despite any personal or business financial consequences. No one should go hungry and no, bus no business that has become part of our community that it does not allow any that does not allow anyone to go hung, hungry should ever have to send their employees home for for good and then close their doors. So my ask of the council this evening is to put the wheels in motion and without delay explore the many ways to find the funds to help our our own survive this public health crisis. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak and and give my um, thoughts, uh, Terry Voidick. 
Thank you very much. Clerk, can you call the next speaker? Ms. Kathy Gardner. Ms. Gardner, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Ma'am, you have three minutes starting me? now. Yes, we can. You have three minutes. Okay. My name is Kathy Gardner, and I moved to Aurora in 1994. I first lived on the west side, and now I live on the east side in Ward 1. And the reason for my uh, participation today is during this self-isolation time, I've been trying to reach out to a lot of people that I know that live alone and don't have a lot of money. And I was just wondering whatever happened to the program that was begun several years ago to provide citywide Wi-Fi. I believe the vendor went out of business or decided they didn't want to participate anymore. But I was just wondering if that's a lesson we can learn now from people being isolated when we have the next disaster or problem like this. I think having citywide Wi-Fi available to people that cannot afford Xfinity or AT&T to have their you know, cable and Wi-Fi. I was just wondering if there was any plans that could be made now um, to take care of those people in the future. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for letting me voice my opinion. Thank you very much, ma'am. Clerk, can you call the next speaker? Mr. Roger Vernon. Roger Vernon, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear Thank me? Yes, sir. You have three minutes as of now. Thank you. My name is Roger Vernon, 2625 Ginger Woods Drive, Aurora. I represent the Big Woods Marmion neighborhood, the largest AMPI group in the city. The first topic I would like to address this evening is the proposed liquor ordinance. We applaud the city staff in trying to combine the several liquor classifications into four basic classes. However, there are a few items within the proposal that our residents have concerns about. These are the Bilter Farnsworth Entertainment District, the drive through sales, strolling endorsement, and self-service at the Fox, uh, Fox Valley Mall. I understand that Alderman Lanas has submitted four amendments to remove these items from the ordinance. We support these, those amendments. The second item I would like to address is the support for the local business during the, this trying time. As you know, small businesses are the backbone of our economy and usually do not have the resources large companies do to weather the storm. Even in good time, restaurants have a difficult time making ends meet. Places like Double Yoke, Hafa Taco, Pub 56, Wang Garden, and others need our help. If we lose these local businesses, it will be at least a year or two before anyone even considers opening a new business and probably five years or more before we are fully recovered. The $50 million that the, is earmarked for this in the city's budget to relocate the Hollywood Casino could better be used to help these local businesses. Less than 5% of the Big Woods Marmion neighborhood residents support moving the casino into our neighborhood. Thank you for your time. Be safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk, do we have any additional speakers? We do not, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. That concludes that portion of our agenda. We'll now move on to the next portion. Today, we have a short consent agenda prior to today's meeting. The Alderman had the opportunity to fully review each of the items on the consent agenda and ask questions of staff. The items on the agenda were vetted by the Alderman, are non-controversial, and all Aldermen were given the chance to ask that any of the items proposed on the consent agenda be removed and considered separately. They still have that opportunity today. Um, will the clerk please read the consent agenda in full? 20-0216, a resolution for accepting the improvements and waiving the maintenance security for WASD 129 Jefferson School Improvements, 1151 Plum Street. Item 20-0217, a resolution accepting the improvements and maintenance security for QT9 software, 2731 Beverly Drive. 20-0230, a resolution approving reduction number one for three securities associated with Mitchell Road Industrial Park. Mr. Mayor, would move for approval. There's been a motion second. for there's been a motion for approval by Alderman Seville, a second by Alderman Hardburnt. Are there any motions um, or questions or motions to remove anything from the consent agenda? With no questions or motions to remove, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? 
Yes. Alderman Messiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries. The consent agenda is approved. Now let's go on to new business. Clerk, will you read the first item under new business? 20-0077, an ordinance amending chapter six, alcoholic liquor, section 6-2 definitions and section 6-8 classifications of the city of Aurora code of ordinances. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. There's been a motion made by Alderman Hart Burns, seconded by Alderman Garza. Uh, is there a presentation on this? There is. Um, let me have a second. Um, as you know, this, or you may not know, this has been in the RAP committee um, for the past few months coming up. Ms. Lang, let me just ask, can every alderman see the um, what's before then the chapter six alcohol liquor that's on their screen? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Lang. Thank you. Um, we staff brought this to the RAP committee a few months ago. Um, due to changes in economic development, as well as um, businesses coming to our community, we believe that there needed to be an update to our chapter six uh, local ordinance. Um, the food and beverage industry is changing right now. Um, all of these models that are changed in the 6-2 definitions were concepts that came through DST meetings in the past, um, past year. We are looking to fill some of the empty buildings. And again, this started before the pandemic. We were really looking at buildings downtown and throughout the community that have been long vacant and these newer concepts that are coming in that did not fit one of the existing um, business models. Um, we have slowly been updating the code. As you recall, in the summer of 2018, we updated the enforcement uh, procedures and now we're able to um, work with our licensees and there are consequences if a licensee is not following the guidelines in chapter six. We are also looking um, and have already brought through changes in the past few months on making the liquor code uh, business friendly as far as updating the applications and the renewal process, which we are currently going through now. Um, as you know, the six, section 6-8 that is before you today um, is amended, um, which I'll show you shortly, but prior it, or currently as it is, it's classifications A through T that are very specific per business. And every time we have a new concept come in, we were having to create a new classification. Um, right now, out of the 24 types of licenses, we have uh, 14 that have only three to four uh, licenses per one, some that have none. So again, what we're looking to do is to clean up our liquor code, organize it, and make it easier for businesses as well as staff. The proposed classifications in section 6-8 that is in front of you today are four classifications. The first is class A package sales. Uh, the second one is Class B, on-site consumption, which is um, typically the E's and F restaurants uh, that you have now that would fall under Class B. Class C is especially on-site consumption, which is some of the new business models, and Class D is going to be specialty by area. We also have in our Section 6-8, as well as Section 6-2, we have endorsements for each of the categories to allow some flexibility for the license holders and these new business concepts. So we aren't making a new license for every type of new business that comes to town. Um, as you will see uh, in the proposed classifications, this isn't, um, th this is proposals of what type of businesses would fall in each of these licenses. Um, it's not necessarily exactly, but we wanted to give some guidance. So package A sales is, um, as you can see, liquor stores, grocery stores, 
hotels, florists, et cetera. And the endorsements down at the bottom are the delivery and drive-through as proposed. Class B, again, you will see the on-site consumption. That would be the restaurants, the catering, banquet halls, casino, social clubs, hotel. Additionally, on uh, below that, the endorsements are package sales, video gaming, which I can explain later, and outdoor seating. Um, and as we saw with the um, mayor's ability to amend um, the local liquor commissioner for this pandemic, um, our on-site consumption, a lot of those restaurants did not have the flexibility without that emergency order to do the package sales. So moving forward, this would give the ability and flexibility for businesses that were class E and F licenses to do what they're doing and still continue business and um, keep their small businesses afloat. Um, class C is the specialty on-site consumption. Again, this is where the new concepts come in. The tap rooms, the breweries and brew pubs, bottle shops, wine bars, automatic dispensing, which I will talk about further, as well as some of the um, arts and recreational type licenses. Those also would have an endorsement that they can apply for for package sales. The final section is a spe uh, class D specialty um, by um, area, and we broke it down into four areas. There's a downtown core, downtown fringe, Fox Valley Mall, and reserved for right now the Farnsworth and Builder Entertainment Center. Um, area. Again, as I said with the Class A, a lot of it is similar. The florist and basket um, has opened it up to wine and liquor baskets. Not here. Farmer's market is uh, temporary package sales, which we didn't have. We're looking for enforcements for delivery to the car, which we currently have under uh, code section 6-14, as well as offsite. So if you think of uh, grocery delivery, this would allow for in the city of Aurora, the delivery of alcohol following all the guidelines that are already in section 6-14. The new proposal for the endorsements uh, that you will see in the definitions under 6-2 is the drive-through. This would be limited to, um, the definition really limits it to a liquor store, a full liquor store or a grocery store. That is how um, we have it drafted. Um, uh, obviously all local zoning laws would apply as far as where drive-throughs are permitted. Class B, um, this eliminates, before we had only beer and wine restaurants, but we had a lot of restaurants requesting the ability to serve beer and margaritas. We and wouldn't fit into the criteria. This allows um, the restaurants to expand in that. It also, um, the definitions under 6-2 have a classification for restaurant for gaming purposes that um, restricts it to a full service restaurant for gaming. Um, Additionally, this, it remo removes the special use provision for residential areas and uh, changes the process to what is similar in 6-13 allowed areas. And that would, the review for that would be conducted by the li liquor hearing officer as well as that uh, ward alderman in that residential area. Additionally, there's been some reduction to overall square footage requirements as well as change to seating counts. We still have the full service restaurant definition for gaming, which would be 125 seats for a standalone um, and shopping center. Um, as far as the requirements just for like the restaurants um, would be 60 seats for standalone and 30 seats for shopping. Mm -hmm. Downtown core, that specialty area would have no seating requirement. Again, to use some of those buildings that are older and spaces that we have had vacant for a long time. The downtown fringe would have a requirement of 30 seats and uh, one of the definitions in 6-2 also has a proposal for 10% uh, seating provision. So if you're three, she three seats shy and it falls within the 10%, um, there would still be an allowance for you to get your liquor license. Moving on to the class C, um, again, these are the specialty type um, restaur um, restaurants or <laughs> ideas coming to Aurora that um, we haven't really been able to do because of how limited our licenses are. These, again, would have some of the spaces that um, may not be able to have a full service kitchen. So we relaxed some of the food service requirements and kitchen requirements. Food would still need to be served, but it would be more of heavy appetizers, uh, charcuterie trays, partnering with neighborhood restaurants to have food delivered or 
uh, food trucks, as long as it's followed under our chapter 25, section seven, mo mobile food vendors and the locations are able to go. Um, and I discussed earlier the four different zones um, and this kind of breaks down what some of the different requirements are. I spoke about downtown core as well as downtown fringe. Going out to the Fox Valley Mall Entertainment District, this would be um, the ring road and that entire area surrounded by the mall. And what we are looking to do in that area is relax food service requirements um, as we are having some arts and entertainments going to that area, as well as um, the strolling concept uh, for service. This is limited only to the Fox Valley Mall, not any other location. And that would be inside of the mall. And this would allow um, self-service through a kiosk where you're able to have somebody who is Bassett trained um, observe you while you pour um, alcohol, usually craft beers or, or wine, um, and you're able to stroll around the indoor mall. So we are looking to bring that concept to further develop the Fox Valley Mall. Um, we did have the opportunity to visit Rosemont, who has a similar uh, concept in their outlet mall and speak with the police. I do have um, Lieutenant Thomas on who will be able to answer uh, questions about that if there are any. Um, I, just to go ahead for this, this is a concept we're looking for that Fox Valley Mall. This is the... Um, the, the kiosk, as you can see in the picture on the left, there is a Bassett trained employee there um, that will be observing the taps, hands out a cup, and um, individuals that are of 21 years of age or older are able to obtain alcohol and stay within the mall and um, consume it. So those are the... Um, I guess a simplified version of what we are proposing. I know I was able to speak to a lot of uh, aldermen beforehand. And if anyone has any questions, I- Ms. Lane, before we go on to questions um, from the aldermen, if any alderman, um, I'd like you or Ms. Stallings to address if any alderman has any questions about any current liquor license holders and whether or not we expressed the changes and whether or not there was a consensus at our last meeting. Ms. Stallings, can you speak to that? I believe your mute is on. Yeah, I got it. Um, Mary, you're asking, I'm sorry, can you read about the last the meeting we had with all the liquor license holders and, and presented this, this idea to them. And plus many of these um, changes were requests from our actual business and liquor license holders. Yeah, actually we, um, we, some of the meetings, many of the meetings that we've had over the last several months um, are DST meetings specifically, um, have involved businesses who ha are looking to bring new concepts to the city. Um, the strolling concept kiosk, uh, we've actually had a meeting with a company who's interested in coming here. Um, and we didn't really have an uh, the available license for them prior to this. Um, I don't know if Ms. Lang has anything else to add. I'm speaking of the meeting we had with all the liquor license holders. I think it was in January or February where we outlined all the changes. It, from that meeting, in my recollection, um, license holders were happy to see changes being brought forth and um, simplifying the process for the license holders as well as the ability for these small businesses to expand their services. Um, and again, I think after this pandemic and what we've experienced the past few weeks, we can see how everyone has to think on their feet and come up with additional ideas to continue their business. And um, we had businesses prior to this, one that just went through the process that needs the ability to have packaged license and under our current license, <laughs> their concept um, is really unable to be fulfilled. And that's why we're trying to go forward and let these businesses um, e expand in, uh, um, in this way. Questions from the Alderman. Mr. Mayor. Alderman Franco. Yeah, I, I don't really have a question, but I <clears throat> being on the RAP committee and, and sitting through the, uh, the presentations over the last few months, I, I want to say that the, uh, 
staff, legal, Alex uh, Voigt and them did an outstanding job. Um, they, they took an archaic system and they, and they brought us up to date. Um, they, we now have a flexible ordinance that gives us opportunities for growth and change. Uh, and, you know, they took all the input from the aldermen, but they took it, went back and changed some things back and forth. It was a nice dialogue. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize we had so many subject matter experts on the uh, RAP committee, but uh, we had a lot of good input there. So I just want to recognize them because they really, they worked hard on this for a number of months. And, and I think the final product is pretty darn good. Uh, Alderman Dinell. Um Mayor, thank you. Uh, Ms. Lang, I don't know if we really fully discussed what was happening with the Farnsworth district and what we would be voting on this evening. If you could go through that one more time for us. Right now, how we have it drafted in both 6-2 and the definitions, it's marked as reserved. It is outlined as Farnsworth Builder Entertainment District, period, reserved. And then in 6-8, which is the classifications under, um, I think it's D, it is the Farnsworth Builder Entertainment District reserved. So at this point, we don't even have the boundaries um, we don't have anything actually in that section. We are reserving it to show, you know, in the future, we hope to, you know, develop that area. We have a lot of, of land, um, but that would require us coming back to city council when we have something drafted, when we know what we're going to do, bring it forth to city council for city council's approval. So at this time, we're just asking for it to be reserved and that is what we have. So there that what you see there is that it's just reserved. Any other Alderman have any questions, comments, Alderman Buck? Yes, uh, Ms. Lang, can you, um, <clears throat> at a number of places in the ordinance, it talks about uh, both active and passive um, uh, surveillance. It, it, or is that um, both a, a person uh, visualizing, uh, say in the strolling aspect, is that both uh, video and a live person uh, having sight on the strolling? Or, or can you explain that, the active and passive? Um, we do have video requirements with the liquor license, but the active and passive um, that I mentioned in there or that we mentioned in there is for um, those kiosks. They have a card. So electronically, you will be able to see how many ounces are actually being poured by an individual. And then the active portion would be uh, physically observing them at um, the, the taps or the self-service tap. Okay, thank you. Alderman Jenkins, did you have a question earlier? No, any other alderman with any questions? Alderman no. Smith? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just also wanna commend um, this group for putting this, changing um, this ordinance and bringing everything up today. You guys really did work hard and those of us who are, who are on the RAP committee have been looking at this for many, many months. So much of this is not new to us. Um, but the bottom line is the food and beverage industry is changing and we need to change with it. And these concepts that you guys have put in front of us allows us to do that. It allows us to bring Aurora up to date for the food and beverage industry. We had two people speak tonight about what we're doing for small businesses. And I think what we're proposing tonight is for small businesses. It will help these businesses. Um, the Fox Valley Mall has put millions and millions of dollars uh, into it so that it will stay open and stay alive for the city of Aurora. This additional strolling part will add even more to the Fox Valley Mall. We need to keep that mall. We need to keep that economic growth. We need to understand that that will bring jobs there, will bring more economic growth for our area. And um, I had struggled with a few of these uh, items as we went along, but we talked through them and we got to do what's best for the city. And this isn't, this isn't a personal issue. This is what we feel is best for our city. And, and I thank you for putting this together and I look forward to moving it forward. Any other questions or comments? Alderman Yamas. I'm sorry. I'm, hold on just one second, Alderman Yamas. Alderman Jenkins. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think uh, you know, it is true that it's, this is going to help uh, small businesses, but the key thing is, is this came from the business community. People who, who want to do business in our community, people who are here 
spoke up and said, this, these are the things that would help them. And that's the thing that allows us to stay uh, top of mind when we, are, we listen to the business community. Some of them have, um, they have skin in the game and they know what helps them to be able to compete and to be able to thrive. So for us to listen and then act is a great thing. And I want to commend staff for doing that. Thank you, sir. Alderman Yamas. I was just going to ask with my four amendments, would I discuss that now or, or once it comes time to vote on those or kind of what the procedure would be there? Uh, I believe we'd probably discuss them now before we took a final vote on the actual ordinance that's before us, if there's any amendments. Um, uh, Council, Vince? Mr. Mayor, um, the, the pro procedure is with a motion and a second on the underlying. The council could consider a motion and a second to amend it, and then the discussion would be on the amendment rather than on the underlying issue. So if the alderman wanted to move one of his issues, or one of his amendments, he'd be able to do that at this time. You know what, um, for- once you, uh, once you take the motion and second on this. Okay. Alderman Yamas, just um, for the purpose of the time, why don't you describe what all four motions are, then we will take one at a time to to, to vote on. Are they all related? They, uh, not necessarily related. All right, they we can take them. Go ahead. The legislature, but okay. it, um, I believe uh, Ms. Lang had mentioned them earlier. The, the four amendments are, um, to remove the, the following items or portions, provisions of this ordinance, proposed ordinance. The first is a strolling endorsement for the Fox Valley Mall. The second is the self poor um, option, or if I don't remember if the name, if it was named something different, but the, the, uh, the idea where you can pour the drink yourself with one of those cards that was in the presentation. The third was to remove the Bilter Farnsworth Entertainment District. And then the fourth was to remove the drive-through option. So let's take them one at a time. So um, it, the first one was a stroller portion. Deb, can you read that language um, as it's stated in the ordinance? Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, uh, Amendment Yamas 1 is um, under Section 6-2, and it's striking the drive-through endorsement. Um, would you like me to read the whole portion that needs to be stricken? Go ahead, yeah. Okay. To strike drive-through endorsement authorize the retail sale of alcoholic liquors and original packages only and not for consumption on the premises, period. The primary purpose of the premises shall be the retail sale of alcohol liquor, the premises shall have a minimum gross area of 2,000 square feet and only standalone liquor stores and grocery stores, as defined herein, are eligible for this endorsement. The sales transaction, transaction must include adequate evidence of proof of age, which shall be recorded with the transaction, prohibits the sale of single service cans and bottles. Any licensee applying for the drive through endorsement must go through the city council process. Mm -hmm. All right, um, can I have a, there's been a motion to remove that. Uh, is there a motion? I assume it's from Yamas. I motion it myself. Yes, so Alderman so Yamas has, go ahead. Uh, so moved. Alderman Yamas has made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. <clears throat> All right, Alderman Lofty seconded that motion. All right, is there any, uh, questions or discussions on this motion to amend? If I may, Mr. Mayor. Please. Uh, first, let me, uh, I guess, kind of explain. I I am on, on the RAP committee that handled these changes to the, the ordinance along with our legal department and the clerk's office. And at the time when we were discussing the, the drive-through option, there kind of was some concern expressed um, within the committee. I was kind of iffy about it because Really, it's not something that's uh, popular in the area. I could only think of one over at, in DeKalb or Sycamore out by NIU. So it's kind of a negative image of, of these drive-throughs. And after um, hearing some concerns from different residents in the ward in different areas of the ward, uh, it became clear that this was something that residents just did not approve and um, would have to you know, take their position on this. So I'm asking that it be removed. 
Yeah. Alderman Lofty. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Um, I think uh, during the coronavirus, I would be okay with it. But if this is going to be permanent, um, I think it's a negative thing. I think it could be susceptible to have young people um, buy alcohol and uh, tough to control. You know, it, it's got to spike DUIs. I, the only time I, I went to school in Ann Arbor, the only time I, I remember going through or knowing anyone through was when they were drinking. So I think that if someone wants to buy alcohol, they should be able to get out of their car and walk in a liquor store. I don't see how this is really going to help Aurora um, at all. Uh, we'll go to Alderman Franco. Before I go to Alderman Franco, just let me be clear. Alderman Lofty just made a statement that young people would be able to buy alcohol. Is it still a requirement that you have to be 21 and show proof of your age before you bought the uh, alcohol, Ms. Lang? Correct. All the um, liquor code, state liquor code and local ordinances would have to be complied with, which includes checking IDs as well as impairment. Alderman Franco. Well, I think some of the reasons not to do it are speculative at best, but I would also say based on the coronavirus, based on the way of life we are now, this is going to probably be the future, carry outs, drive throughs. So where I was not very passionate about before I could have went either way, didn't bother me. I'm a little bit more passionate about it now because I think this is where we're going to go anyway. I think this is our whole way of life is going to change. So not that we're getting ahead of it, but I don't see a problem with it. We've had no problem with it in our little experiment because of the virus. I don't think going forward is going to be a factor. And I think anything, again, that can help small businesses, any kind of businesses, would be a, a positive for us. So I, I can't even think about why this would be a negative for us, especially the times we're in and where we're going to be tomorrow in the next two or three years from now. You know, Alderman Franco brings up a point. Is Lieutenant Thomas on? Have we had any, we're, we're actually doing this now during the during the um the virus and the uh, shelter in place and stay at home order. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Thomas, have we had any issues with this up to this point? And you're on mute, so you might have to take yourself off mute. Oh, we haven't had any issues um, at all um, that I'm aware of. So, in fact, uh, um, all, many, our disturbances are way down. Any issues at all related, most of our calls for services. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other alderman? Uh, alderman Bo. Yeah, I, I think we have uh, a history in looking at this. I, I, I imagine at one time when uh, people used to go into the pharmacy and get their medication, and then it transferred to drive-through. I imagine there were some of these same questions, but now we just go through the drive-through. We get any type of medications on a regular basis. We don't think two ways about it. We just do it. And you can get things much stronger than alcohol uh, through a drive through in a pharmacy. And the same thing, uh, those pharmacies that are attached to our grocery stores. So uh, kind of like what Alderman Franco said, I think this is uh, part of our future. And really, I, I think we're getting ahead of the curve. Thank you, sir. Any other Alderman, uh, Alderman Dinell? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think there was a number of us that were on the RAP committee then when we first heard about drive-through, we, we had some concerns that, uh, and especially how drive-throughs were perceived in the past, uh, something I saw in Texas long ago, and it, and it wasn't very a classy outfit. But I agree with Alderman Bug and Alderman Franco. Uh, I think this, this COVID is going to change the way we do everything. I, I used to uh, scoff at people that would drive through a McDonald's drive-through. Why can't they go inside and get their food? But I think McDonald's is doing very well. Not that McDonald's and alcohol are the same thing, but I do think that we have to look at uh, the future of how we do business. And, uh, uh, and while I first was skeptical, I'll be voting for this. Any other questions or comments by any alderman? All right, with no for I'm sorry, Alderman Garza. Yeah, in my opinion, I think as soon as they're asking for their ID, I didn't see no problem. And it'd be the same like uh, right now, they're selling in the, in the liquor stores or selling in the Walgreens. Uh, if they saw the age, they're asking for the ID. So I don't see a problem. Uh, Texas is very popular, especially in summertime, it's very popular the drive through selling liquor. So I don't know, I didn't see why we cannot do it here. Any other alderman with it? Thank you. Uh, alderman Hartburns. 
Yes, Ms. Samir, Florida is very popular too with the drive-through. I mean, it's been very successful all these years. I mean, growing up, we even had them. So that's hundred years ago. Don't tell nobody, I told y'all that. But we haven't had a problem. I hadn't seen a problem. So with that, I think this call, time to call the roll. All right, so just make it clear, this is a motion to amend um, and a vote. Uh, so, Rick, what would be a vote in favor versus a, a vote uh, opposed? The pending question right now is the motion offered by Alderman Yamas. So a vote, mode in, a vote in favor is to approve the amendment to remove the language that uh, Ms. Lang described. A vote against would be to keep the text as introduced. Keep the text and have drive. As, it, as introduced, yeah. yes. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mr. Mayor, can I just um, just clarify as well? So Alderman Yamas presented a proposed four amendments. So are we voting on just all a, four? No, just the just number. the first one. Okay. Alderman Yamas. Yes. Alderman Garza. Yes. Alderman Masiakos. No. Alderman Donnell. No. Alderman Franco. No. Alderman Seville. Alderman Seville. You're on mute still, Alderman Seville. You 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 took yourself off and put yourself there. You go right there, right there. Okay, sorry about that. No. Alderman Hartburn. No. Alderman Smith. No. Alderman Bug. No. Alderman Lopsy. Yes. Alderman Jenkins. No. Alderman O'Connor. Yes. You know, before before you count the number, I believe that um, Alderman Garza, based on her previous statement, might have misunderstood what what you were saying. Did you mean Alderman Garza to vote in favor of Alderman Yamas's uh, no, motion? No, no, no. It's, it's no. Okay. All right. Um, three yes and nine no. All right. That um, uh, amendment fails. Um, can we go on to, so that's, that's one of four. Can we go on to the next one? Next amendment? Yes. Um, the, let me make sure I have this. The next amendment um, it was 1A that was tied to um, amendment one. So moving on to um, Yamas amendment two, this is related to exhibit B. And this will be striking the proposed section 6-2 language beginning at eight, page eight, line 25, which would strike the definitions of Farnsworth and Bilter Entertainment District reserved. All right, may I entertain a motion to amend and remove that <laughs> language? So moved. May I have a second? Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Lofty questions or discussion on the uh, motion? Uh, uh, Alderman, what, you know, before we start with you, Alderman Franco, let's start with Alderman uh, Yamas to find out why he did what he did. And then we'll come to Alderman Franco. Go ahead, Alderman Yamas. So on, on this, I understand that we are simply just reserving a spot in this new ordinance for a future entertainment district. It isn't defined as something that would be determined in the future by city council. However, this is in my ward kind of in the heart of the ward. And there's already a lot of, of uncertainty in the surrounding communities and throughout the ward on the development there at the Farnsworth Corridor and at the Bilcher properties that we purchased earlier, or I guess uh, last year. And this now just kind of adds to that uncertainty and makes people uncomfortable. So I, I think a, a better approach would be to rather than reserve that now as an entertainment district, let's wait to see what developments come there to the Farnsworth corridor. And then based on what businesses are there, then we can create some type of, of district if we need to, if it's even needed. But at this point, I, I think we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Alderman Franco. So mine is a question because I understand uh, Alderman Yamas' predicament over there. Um, so I just want to get some clarification. Reserving it means nothing except that we will we, we will have to revisit it someday to to put an entertainment district in there is that correct 
Correct. We would have to bring any proposal to city council for approval. Okay, but we still have the opportunity if we vote with Alderman Yamas's proposal to bring that up later on. In addition, we can we can revisit an entertainment district being there later on. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So okay. then, my other question is: What is is there a benefit for us doing it now and reserving it as opposed to addressing it later on and? you know, making it an entertainment district later on, pros and cons of that. Um, staff would say that the reason we proposed it is to show that this is an area we're looking at developing and um, perhaps, you know, someone from, uh, I don't know if Trevor would wanna weigh in or invest Aurora as far as what this looks as far as bringing in development and the possibility just showing that this is another area we're looking um, in the future to develop. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tre Trevor, Mr. Trevor Dick, if you wanna weigh in on that. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I uh, just wanted to add, yes, the, uh, the idea is to create that vision that we've been working on at a staff created entertainment area, as well as a family area up in the, uh, Farnsworth filter area. Nothing is concrete, uh, but we're starting really hard and we've been working on it for several months to actually attract development in that area. And I think having this would add some flexibility to help us attract the type of businesses and uses that would be appropriate for the area. Um, and if there's any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Mr. Alexander, you wanna add anything to that? Your mute zone, go ahead. No, sir, I, 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 all I can say is uh, staff, has been working very hard. And if you recall from the beginning when we talked about the potential uses at the time that we uh, made the decision to acquire the properties on Bilter and the properties on Farnsworth, part of our goal always was to look at our processes, our procedures, our ordinances to try and make us as competitive and business um, attractive as possible to the market. Uh, the other important thing for all of this, uh, I think everyone should consider, and I believe in talking to the individual aldermen, uh, everybody, everyone acknowledged it, and that is in coming out of this pandemic, and we will come out of this, uh, albeit with new normals and new procedures for a while, but we want to be in the most competitive <clears throat> position possible to hit the ground running when things start to come back. So the more that we can make ourselves competitive and updated, uh, the better. And that was a consensus from the mayor on down to staff. And in looking at our competition, so to speak, um, we recognize that in a lot of these cases, we were behind the curve, to borrow a phrase from Alderman Bug, uh, and not ahead of the curve. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Alderman. Alderman Jenkins and Alderman Lofty. Go ahead, Alderman Jenkins. Yes, Mr. Mayor, this, is, this action is very similar to what was done when the initial, original first TIF was established at Farnsworth in 1988. Uh, and people mm -hmm. thought that this was too soon, uh, but it, it, opened, it opened a door to, to where we are today. And so I, I, I would... I, I feel that we've, we've got to make sure that, again, showing the business community that we are a progressive, business-friendly uh, city. And this is one of the steps that we can be able to do taken uh, from a cue from what we did years ago. Alderman Lofty. Yeah, so part of this is my ward as well, the uh, part over by the outlet mall. And, you know, the neighbors are concerned. There's a lot of uncertainty, like Alderman Yamas said. And, you know, I don't know that we don't, we don't even really know what we're voting on. It's like we don't have the boundaries. You know, entertainment districts talking about, I mean, I'm looking at, it just talks about the definition of its own set of rules. But I don't see how we're getting ahead of anything here. The entertainment area talks about pool tables and disc jockeys and things like that. I don't, there's enough traffic over there. I think if, if it's for outdoor seating or something like that, but I just haven't heard any really reason why to do it. Like Alvin Franco said, I don't know that we're getting ahead. If we want to come back and make this a certain type of area, we're going to have to come back anyway. So I just, 
I think there's a lot of uncertainty that people over there were not happy about the purchase of the land by the uh, outlet mall. They're concerned we're going to put in a casino there or a convention center, and they already have a lot of traffic, and they don't they don't want it. So I would be voting against this with Alderman Thomas. Any other Alderman with uh, Alderman uh, O'Connor? Mr. Mayor, it's not so much an issue as far as I'm concerned as to what we see coming forth because we've talked about it and I think we're well aware that there's going to be an interesting, uh, challenging combination of things that could be available to, to do in that area. But to me, the very fact that we just simply slapped a name entertainment, entertainment district, uh, that tells me nothing as to what it's going to help a developer because there's no definition to it. There's no filling out of it. Is that gonna fit uh, particularly what certain developers wanna do? I think it's it's better course at this point, simply to continue the work that we're doing and trying to get the interest there. Once we have a better feel for what people are interested in, then I think it's legitimate to come in, lay out the entire uh, possibility and indicate then that we're ready to proceed with, with putting it together as an entertainment recreation, district, whatever uh, whatever number of, of names we're going to put on it at this point. So I, I will support Alderman Yamas at this point. Do we have, um, uh, before we come to you, Alderman McNeil, I'll come to you right next, is um, do we have any economic development? Do we have uh, Dave Debo on with us today? Uh, I am on, Mr. Mayor. All right. Can you, can you, um, and you, and then I'll have Brian Gay speak to it before we get to uh, Alderman Dineau. Can you speak as to why this might be an important thing to help spur development over in that area? Brian, do you want to start over there and then I, I could come over after that? Would you like to speak first? Either Go ahead, way. Brian. Oh, sure thing. So this is Brian Gay from Invest Aurora. Uh, I, again, I think kind of, uh, Jumping on to uh, Mr. Alex Alexandrews' uh, comments as well as uh, Trevor's, uh, I, I think the perception in this case uh, is really the, the major benefit here. Looking at a pro con list, as, as uh, Alderman Franco was asking for you, know, looking at the, the pros in this case, um, yeah, it's really perception in that you know the city is looking forward um, at this you know at the developments in this corridor, and from a marketing perspective, you know this allows us to put one more piece into the puzzle in terms of what are the types of development we would look at. Now, granted, there are no descriptions in terms of adding this to the liquor code, but this allows us to you know start approaching that conversation from a holistic standpoint of what are some of the types of developments, what are the things, the amenities. Um, that you know that we'd like to see and also shows you know somewhat of a proactive approach from the city and that these are things that we're looking at that in the case of us going out to look at developments we can go out and say you know this is something that we're looking at doing um and welcoming those conversations with developers with the different types of businesses and showing that we have that kind of uh, business friendly open approach uh to looking at possibilities in that area I think Brian said it uh, well. I think it's uh, at this point, as I think some of the older men brought out, it's really a marketing tool in terms of defining uh, what's going to be. Obviously, as the uh, I think as Alderman O'Connor mentioned, as we uh, figure things out, um, looking at uh, supply demand, who might be interested, will be a little bit more refined in it. But at this point, it's a it's a way to set an outline and uh, start the process going. Alderman Donnell. Your uh, mute is on, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. So um, as I recall, we were going to do a master plan for this area, um, much like we did out on 59. And I would think uh, that that master plan might answer some of these questions. Uh, I'm sensitive to Alderman Yamas and, and Alderman Lofchi, they're, what the residents are asking. And some of those letters have come to me as well. So uh, if we're hopefully we're going to move forward with this master plan. I think that would be the time maybe to incorporate uh, this entertainment district at that time and maybe answer the residents questions. So I'd like to try to support the, the alderman at this point. Any other questions or comments from alderman? All right, before we take a vote, let me just, you know, point out there have been a lot said, especially by our economic development personnel and one uh, alderman Jenkins, who was, uh, the director of economic development when, when even before the mall came 
and what we had to use as a placeholder in that area and define before the mall got there just to uh, make the mall comfortable that this could potentially be the development that we see today. Without us marketing and painting that picture for the developers and showing them what it could be and holding a place, not that we're filling in the, the, the subject matter and the details now, but holding it and marketing it and using it as, as a tool to get exactly what we need there. You know, without doing that, you know, it, it, they won't have the vision that we want to paint for, for Aurora. It's our job to paint that vision and, you know, to make that determination. And I think, you know, using any tool that we have, especially coming out of COVID-19 and the, the, the issues that we'll have to deal with to, uh, you know, to, to get our revenues back up and, and, uh, and, you know, to get business rolling as fast as possible. You know, this is just one of this is one of the ways that that will make it happen. I recognize, you know, some sometimes we like to have, you know, the actual detail of of every move we make. But in marketing, you don't always have the detail. We have to paint a picture, and this helps paint that paint that future picture. So, you know, I would ask that uh, in this particular case, we vote no uh, to the amendment for um, uh, Alderman Yamas's amendment. So, at this point. Clerk, you want to call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? <clears throat> Alderman your, Garza? Gar Alderman Garza, your mute is on. It's off now. It's your, you can, we can hear you. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. It said no for the amendment. Okay, Thank no. Thank you. Alderman, Alderman Masiakos? Alderman Masiakos? No. Thank you. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? No. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Your, um, your mute is on, Alderman Hartburns. No. Alderman Smith? No. Alderman Bug? No. Alderman Lopshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? No. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. Five yes, seven no. All right, well that motion fails. Let's go on to the next motion. Uh, Ms. Lang? Um. Going to skipping over to a which was tied with um, motion or amendment two. We go to amendment Yamas three. This is tied to exhibit B of the legislator item, which is um, proposing to strike six dash two beginning on page 18, lines one to 14, to read as follows section six dash two definitions. Self service means a standalone establishment that offers self service self pour options for either beer, cider, or wine, period. License holder is required to have a Bassett trained employee actively and passively monitor customer operated dispenser pours and the consumption of customer operated dispenser poured alcohol at all times, period. Only eligible in entertainment districts previously approved by city council, period. Customers at a self service endorsement locations must purchase their alcohol from. Uh, customer operated dispensing devices via a programmable pre-authorized access card that the licensee must be able to deactivate the access card if ne necessary to prevent violations of the municipal <coughs> licensee is required to have video monitoring of the customer operated dispensing devices at all times during which the licensed <coughs> establishment is open to the public Licensee must provide and maintain one Bassett certified employee to serve as an attendant monitoring the customer operated dispensing devices and guard against over service and underage service as well as uh, any other applicable regulations. Any licensee applying for the self service endorsement must go through the city council approval process convenience stores gas station. <laughs> dollar stores are not eligible for this license. A full service kitchen is not required. Video gaming on the premises is not permitted. Is there a motion uh, to approve this amendment? Move. 
the alderman alderman yamas makes the motion is there a second 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 by alderman o'connor questions or discussions alderman yamas can you identify why um you wanted to make that amendment thank you mayor this is similar to the other amendments in that there were concerns from residents in my ward about how this would affect our community whether this would promote um I guess more drinking overall, or if the the right uh, restrictions or uh, I guess security would be in place to prevent underage drinking, pe prevent people from swapping, you know, wristbands or drinks, especially if there's only one employee or uh, the requirements to have one employee there on site that's facet certified versus if you're at a restaurant that there's half a dozen, dozen or more employees there that can keep an eye on things. So that was a concern from residents. Uh, I guess my personal concern with uh, with this is that this is just a, another example of human labor being replaced by automation. And I, I don't think it's, I think overall it's a bigger problem in society, in our, our national workforce, but this is a, a chance or have an input on something local here. And this is just, if a restaurant or, a business is coming to Aurora and they're saying, here, this is what we're going to provide our city. But aside from the product, they're not providing jobs if you only need one person on site to sell hundreds of drinks versus if you were a full-fledged restaurant with a full staff, then you'd be providing uh, employment and something you know, you'd be contributing to uh, to our city. This, I, I don't, I think you, you get all the benefits without you investing in human capital in our city. And that's, I guess, with those two reasons are why I'm opposed to it. All right, before we go on to ask questions, let me just bring on staff. Is Chuck on? Chuck Nelson? I'm right here, Mayor. Sir, can you talk about the, uh, isn't this one of the uh, licenses, the individual at the foundry, the former foundry wanted to wanted to apply for as well and in, in your conversations with him. And if I'm not mistaken, there are a number of employees there because he has a number of different restaurants and, and, and things he offers in his location. Uh, that's correct, Mayor. Uh, several, several months ago, I had the uh, discussion uh, with the new owner of the foundry. And he indicated that uh, the industry is changing and it's going more towards this type of uh, venture. So I think there's a lot of truth uh, to what he was saying. And uh, I think this is a good move. Thank you, sir. And um, Ms. Stallings or Deb Lang, do we have any other folks currently that are applying for this type of license? Beside the founder? Um, we have had interest um, for the Fox Valley Mall for that kiosk that gotcha. I showed Destroy. during the presentation. There are also the possibilities. We're going to have to do some further refining um, of our code. I know there is a local liquor establishment that would like to have wine sampling um, that would require these type of self-service machines. And some of our neighboring communities already have um, at their bars or um, wine bars, these self-service uh, machines that have the cards. So it's not, it's not necessarily just the kiosk. There are numerous other um, devices that still have employees, but a, a different way to serve. And additionally, people can see how many fluid ounces they're actually being served with these kiosks where you wouldn't get that in a normal restaurant. Mr. Alexandru. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was fortunate to sit in uh, on a presentation that occurred in the staff's regular meeting at the DSC with the owners of Fox Valley Mall Centennial and actually part of the slide deck that uh, Ms. Lang has in her presentation came from that meeting. And so a lot of these questions and concerns were raised to the proposed um, uh, vendor or tenant at the mall. Uh, in addition, a number of us have been to purely for research only uh, to some locations in Chicago and other suburbs. And so just a couple of points. Number one, uh, in the mall environment, in a, it, it's not just gonna be one employee, but they're also gonna have strict regulations with the mall itself and mall security. Secondly, 
many of these locations have more than one employee anyway, because you have to have somebody to maintain the machines, keep the, the uh, taps running, uh, keep them clean, et cetera, as well as general. Uh, so, so the one I, I've been to in Chicago, they had at least three employees at any one time. Uh, also interesting, they benefit, depending on the setup, other local restaurants because what they traditionally do. Now, the one in the mall obviously will help the smaller restaurants, the, the larger ones there. But in these standalone locations, they have an iPad on the wall and they usually have arrangements with local pizza, sandwich shops, whatever. And they, people can order from there and get it delivered to the location. So there are some ancillary benefits to this. But again, tying back to what Trevor and Brian said earlier, this is yet another opportunity for us at the behest of the owners of Fox Valley Mall to do something to benefit them, make their location more attractive and more competitive, but with all the controls in place. We also have Lieutenant Thomas on the line who, um, from the police perspective, went up and visited the kiosk and perhaps could fill us in from his perspective perspective um, and sp speaking with mall management there as well as law enforcement um, up in Rosemont on the any issues they have. Lieutenant Thomas. Yeah, they uh, we talked to the chief uh, superintendent there, um, mall security. They've had zero increase in underage consumption. They've had no issues related to drunk and disorderly. They've had no um, you know, increase in accidents in the parking lot where somebody was drinking. They've, they've said it's been a huge success. They got a lot of positive feedback um, from their um, patrons. Um, so as far as uh, underage consumption, because I asked that specifically, if they had any alcohol increase in alcohol related calls for service and that touched a variety of um, statutes and and they said no, not on any level, so. Thank you, sir. All right, questions from Alderman. Um, questions, comments, Alderman Smith. Yes, so um, I believe, you know, self-service is more than just a kiosk at the mall. Um, through research only, like uh, AA said, I have been to a few facilities, um, Specifically, one in Naperville, Wine 56. It's a beautiful location. Um, you self-serve yourself uh, at the wine kiosks, but they have um, waiters and waitresses throughout the, uh, the restaurant because it's also a restaurant that they're serving you food. Um, they also have a bar that you can sit down and, and get other things that are not wine. Um, similar to things that I've been to in Chicago where they've had the kiosks, you go and you serve yourself your drink, but they still have a full um, restaurant full of people serving your food. So you gotta remember it's more than just the kiosk at the mall. It's just, it's a new way that uh, the beverage industry is doing their business. And I believe it's another advancement for Aurora if we um, engage and accept this idea. Thank you. Additional comments or uh, questions from the Alderman? Alderman Clarif you Clarification. Alderman Lofty. So Deb, Deb Lang, this is not just for the mall. This is, we're going to enact this and then anyone can open up like Alderman Smith said, a wine bar in downtown Aurora, correct? So yes, there are two definitions in this amendment. Uh, it's just one of them. Self-service is the definition for these self-pour operating machines. So it's not limited just to the malls. That strolling endorsement is what allows you to walk around outside of establishment. So this self-service could just be a self-service restaurant or um, part of like a, a tap room. But this amendment right now is just talking about the self-service, not the strolling. Is that correct? Correct. That will be later on. Um, a, a that'll, separate amendment. that'll be the last one. Alderman Yamas, your, your mute is on. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I guess right now in this discussion with this specific amendment and discussions with previous amendments, we've been discussing how these changes are going to help our business community and help investment in the city. But what we keep forgetting is how is this going to help our residents? This is going to do the complete opposite. We're replacing real employees, people with families, 
that they need to support with machines. If someone comes in and wants to open up a wine bar, please come do it. That would, that would be nice. I myself don't drink wine, but I know a lot of people do. But then you should also invest in human capital. Don't just come into our city, set up a machine, and take the profits and run. I, I, I think this is just a bad move. It doesn't just apply to alcohol. You can go to McDonald's, not even deal with an employee anymore. You just order everything on the machine. I don't want us to go down that direction. It's, I think it's a dangerous path that, that we're going down by replacing you know, humans, employees, labor with machines. Alderman Franco. Well, I, I understand what Alderman Yamas is talking about. That's a, that's a big picture item, and I, I guess we should be on board with it. But I, I guess I would ask the question then, and we don't know, each, each business will be different. If we don't allow this, do they go somewhere else? If we don't allow it, do they not open at all and get no employees and no business out of this? And, and that's a hard one, you know, that's speculation, we don't know. But I guess that's kind of where we would be if, if, if the trend is going this way and we're left behind, it's just like we're doing everything else. We're trying to get ahead of things and promote business. If this is where we're going as a nation, then we got to be on board with it because then we don't have the jobs at all for even the business opening. And I will say this too, there's probably a lot of jobs that be created for this. Somebody's, somebody's got to make that machine. Somebody's got to maintain that machine. So there's always collateral benefits, even though we don't see them firsthand, but you never know in the chain of distribution and, and building how that's going to help the economy too. So I'm not disagreeing with all the Miamis. I'm just saying sometimes there's some hidden benefits that we may not be perceiving with a worker right there in front of us. Alderman Lofshi. Yeah, I personally don't have that big of a problem either way on this one. However, I do agree with Alderman Yamas that I've had lots of people in my ward call and say they don't, they don't know if they're going to be able to reopen their restaurant. They have 25 employees. They've laid off everyone. And there are going to be a lot of people who need jobs. And I think this is not going to help them. I think this, Alderman Yamas is right. This is going to hurt them. And I also think he's right about, I've been to the one in downtown April and I've seen there really aren't that many people. There's a lot of kiosks and you could easily over drink. And he said, well, it cuts you off with your credit card, but you could have three credit cards like I do. So I think that's the other reason. I do it. it sounded like you were there over drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you could. With, with all three of your credit cards. Uh, Alderman Smith. So just to restate what I said before, um, and, and we'll use the downtown neighbor one as an example, we're talking about jobs. They have waiters and waitresses there. They have bartenders there. The, the restaurant is filled with people that are working there. It's a concept that they have. Um, you can over drink um, in any bar um, if you're sitting at a table and somebody's not paying attention to you. So I think that's kind of a weak argument. But, I, you know, I agree with the, the kiosk is taking away jobs, but we can't blame all of that on this particular concept because, again, if you use Naperville as, a, as an example, that restaurant does have people waiting on tables. So it's not, um, it's not the kiosk type thing that you're talking about for the mall. You know, we'll go ahead and call the, oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Bug, go ahead. Oh, no, I was about to call the question. All right, all right, go ahead and call the question. And I'll say this before I call the question that the argument that, that is made about automation, automation and taking jobs is probably that same argument that was made when, when uh, car manufacturers started using you know, automation and machines to build cars a lot quicker than individuals, um, people you know, by hand. But as pointed out, you know, there's all kind of businesses made from you know, the use of new technology. Somebody has to make that those autom automated machines. Somebody has to repair those automated machines. Somebody has to, you know, oil them. Somebody has to check and make sure that they work every day. So there, you know, there's always jobs created, but the reality is this is the future. You know, we went from telephones stuck to a wall to telephones that you carry to, to computer telephones you carry in your pocket. It is what it is, is the future. And we got to get on board with it and, you know, create jobs and opportunities in other ways, which we will be doing. So at this point, being a motion and a second for the amendment, and this would be a, a yes to agree with the amendment, a no, which I'm asking the alderman to vote no to oppose the amendment. Um, there being a, a motion and a second, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? No. Alderman Masiakos? No. Alderman Donnell? No. Alderman Franco? No. Alderman Seville? No. Alderman Hartburns? No. 
Alderman Smith? No. Alderman Bug? No. Alderman Lapshe? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? No. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. Three yes, nine no. All right, the um, motion for that particular amendment fails. Can we do the last amendment? Um, we are not at the last amendment. No, we we're not. Three we more got... to go. Um, I thought there were only four. No, it was broke down, to, uh, broken into subsections as well, just to keep it clear. So this one, um, the next one is, should go relatively quick. This is amendment YMS4, exhibit B. This is um, striking the language in section 6-2, page 18, lines 15 to 20. And that's the definition of self-service restaurant, means a standalone establishment that offers self-service, self-pour options for either beer, cider, or wine as part of a restaurant. License holder is required to have a Bassett trained employee actively and passively monitor customer operated dispenser pours and the consumption of customer operated dispenser poured alcohol at all times. A full kitchen is required. Any licensee applying for the self service endorsement must go through the city council approval process. Video gaming on the premises is not permitted. So, Alderman Yam, just to be clear, Alderman Yamas wants this to be removed. Yes, this was a second definition under section 6-2. Okay. Um, all right. Um, can I have a motion to amend? No. There's been a motion made by Alderman Yamas. Is there a second? Second. A second made by Alderman O'Connor. Um, this, um, the, the questions or discussion on this one, and this sounds a whole lot similar to the last one we did, which is adding some additional uh, points to it. Are there any questions? So a yes would be to agree to remove this. A no, which I'm asking you to vote no, would be to uh, defeat the uh, motion to amend. Are there any questions or comments from the alderman on this? Being none, clerk, will you please call? Hold on a second, Mayor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? I'll have Alderman Yamas explain why he did this particular one and then Alderman Lofty. I'm sorry. The, the reason that I included this amendment was because it just it goes in line with the, the self- service it's just a separate part of the ordinance but the, gotcha. the idea is the same gotcha gotcha alderman alderman lofty but since we just had the last vote it seems like this is moot like it's not going to help is that, am i wrong uh council it, i think the question is since we already voted the last one down does this one make does it make a difference whether we vote this one though this was a separate definition um and this was in one of the amendments, so I prepared it for this. I, I, I don't know if Alderman Yama still wants to go forward on this one. Well, he he said he did only because of the prayer. So we'll just go ahead and call the call the vote just to make sure. That, again, a yes vote would be to amend and agree with Alderman Yama. So no vote, which you know I'm asking everybody to do, would be that uh, to defeat this amendment. So clerk, being a, a a motion and a second, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas. Yes. Alderman Garza. No. Alderman Mesiakos? No. Alderman Donnell? No. Alderman Franco? No. Alderman Seville? No. Alderman Hartburns? No. Alderman Smith? No. Alderman Bug? No. Alderman Lopsy? No. Alderman Jenkins? No. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. Two yes, 10 no. All right, um, motion fails. Um, all right, so how many more we got? Damn. The next one is on the strolling license. This is number five, and then we would have 5A if this passes. Amendment YAMAS 5 is um, with exhibit B of this legislature item, and it is uh, proposing to strike Section 6-2, beginning on page 19, lines 26 to 27, and page 20, lines 1 to 13, to read as follows. Strolling endorsement per permitted only in an indoor or contained area within a licensed entertainment district previously approved by City Council. Cups holding the alcohol must be different than any other beverage cup in the district, and patrons will be required to wear a wristband indicating they are of the legal age to consume alcohol. Patrons may not be served more than one drink at a time and will be limited to a maximum number per customer. Licensees with a strolling endorsement are required to actively and passively 
monitor customer operated dispenser pours and the consumption of customer operated dispenser poured alcohol. Customers at a strolling endorsement location must purchase their alcohol customer operated dispensing devices via a programmable pre-authorized access card that the licensee must be able to deactivate the access card if necessary to prevent violations of the municipal code. Licensee is required to have video monitoring of the customer operated dis dispensing devices at all times during which the license establishment is open to the public. Licensee must provide and maintain one Bassett certified employee to serve as an attendant monitoring the customer operating dispensing devices and guard against over service and underage service as well as any other applicable regulations. Downtown districts are not eligible for this endorsement. Any licensee that applies for this endorsement must go through the city council process. All right, so may I have a motion to amend? I'll move. There had been a motion to um, a motion made by Alderman Yamas. Is there a second? Second. Then a second made by Alderman O'Connor. Any questions or discussions on this particular amendment? No. Uh, Alderman Lofty. I'll let, I'll let Alderman. I'll yield to Alderman Yamas first. Alderman Yamas. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. This uh, very similar to the other amendments. There were some concern in my ward about what how this strolling endorsement would affect the experience at the mall being at the fox valley mall is a destination for families uh, i completely understand that we have to kind of keep up and be ahead of the curve in, in regard to business developments and, and trends um, and i definitely don't want the fox valley mall to go the way of the, the st charles mall we definitely do need to do whatever it is we can to, to keep them all alive. But I think that mm -hmm. is outweighed by the, the concerns of residents of, of my ward and of the city. Alderman Franco. Yeah, so I, I hate to be the one that's debating all the Yamas on some of these things, but I will just say, and those are good points. And I, they're always concerned too when you have family areas, but I would say uh, in the fourth ward, we have Luigi's Pizza. It's a family fun center. They have a bar. Chuck E. Cheese's, a number of these family places, they're actually family places, do serve alcohol. So, and they've been thriving very well and people like to go to them and it's a, it's a great place to bring your family. So that in and of itself, I don't think is much of a problem. I mean, I can understand how it could be, but I think history has proved that these type of places are conducive to families, even though there is some alcohol involved, typically when the parents go and the whole thing, you know, they're watching what they drink anyway. So while there is somewhat of a concern, I think it's been mitigated by things we've seen over the past couple of decades, actually. Yeah. Alderman Lofshi. If this is in my mall and my uh, feedback is overwhelmingly negative, <laughs> Your they, mall. They, they, they've yeah. been trying to make it a family friendly mall. And I just don't think, you know, alcohol being able to walk around with it. A lot of people said they would be okay with sort of a, a restaurant in the center or a beer garden that's contained, but they're concerned about, you know, controlling teenagers who, or other people that may uh, be able to get alcohol through someone who is of age. Um, I would have preferred to go see the one in Rosemont. I was going to go before the COVID virus hit. I think Rosemont's a different clientele than Aurora. And uh, I wish I would have been notified so I could have gone and check it out. I really think we could wait two weeks on this one. The mall's not going to open it until May. I think that I know I personally would feel better to go look at the other one and then maybe not have the objections and be able to talk to my resident. We have to vote on it tonight. I will vote against it. Any other questions? Uh, Alderman O'Connor. I think my concern was if this had been more, a paired more with a restricted type of area rather than just the sense of going through the whole mall, there's an entertainment, recreational, food service definition area that we could do. It, it's fine. It makes some sense. But I, I just thought the concept of just leaving that area is strolling through the whole mall, which I'm, I'm not quite sure is going to happen, but I just felt that in devising this, it might have been better to try to put it with a defined area within the entertainment district. So I, I will again vote uh, yes in order to, to uh, uh, not have this provision. Alderman Franco. Yeah, I, I just want to say one more thing. We've gone over this, um, this liquor ordinance and you know, a lot of this is new to us. And you know, I don't believe if we find out that something we did today, something we passed today in this ordinance, 
we found out to be a negative for our community, that we wouldn't address that. We wouldn't remove it. We wouldn't mitigate it somehow. So I know there's some concerns going forward, but it's not like this is going to be for 100 years. And if, and if you know, if Armageddon hits because of it, we're, we're stuck with it. We could always amend and change if we feel there's something wrong. So I just, I just want people to know that that's a possibility because we may not get everything right all the time. But I think we have a history of saying when there is something we can make better, we amend it, we fix it, we address it. So I don't think this is any different than what we've done and we'll continue to do in the future. Alderman Messiakos. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think we've we've debated this enough and deliberated uh, this whole topic. We, I think we all know where we stand. I'd like to put this to a vote. All right, Alderman Messiakos called the vote. There being a, um, uh, called the question. There being a motion and a second, um, clearly voting yes. I'm sorry, Alderman Yamas, you did have, you had your hand up? Yeah, just a quick comment before we take a, a vote on this. I just want to uh, thank Attorney Lang for helping me get these amendments together. Uh, she was working over the weekend to get this done. So I just wanted to appreciate or um, show her my appreciation for, for her hard work. Thank you, sir. She's a hard worker. All right. So again, a, um, a yes vote would mean that you agree with Alderman Yamas and you want to take this provision out. A no vote would mean that it stays and the Fox Valley Mall gets uh, what it, what they want. So, Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? No. Alderman Masiakos? No. Alderman Donnell? No. Alderman Franco? Yes. I'm sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> My fault. My mistake. Alderman Seville? No. Alderman Hartburns? Alderman Harburns, you're on, on mute. There you go. No. Okay, no. thank you. Alderman Smith? No. Alderman Bug? No. Alderman Lopsy? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? No. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. Three yes, nine no. All right, the motion for that amendment fails. Do we have any additional amendments? The other amendment was tied to this amendment, so we have no other amendments. Thank you, all right. So we're gonna go back to the original item 20-0077, the ordinance amending chapter six alcohol liquor, section 6-2 uh, definitions and 6-8 classifications of the city of Aurora code of ordinances. There's already been a motion and a second, and I think we've, um, argued this ad nauseum. So if, are there, I'll just ask the question, are there any questions or comments? Uh, Alderman O'Connor? Well, as soon as you said we've argued it ad nauseum, <laughs> you yeah. can't get any worse then. So <laughs> I just want to make a couple comments. Uh, this is not necessarily the true contrarianism coming out again, but these are areas that I had a real concern about. Um, the fact is that if you back up and look at the overall changes that have been made, I think they've been very constructive. I think they make a whole lot of sense. I think I detected in it, however, almost a, a direction of, okay, anything goes. Let's open it all up. Let's do whatever is possible. And we've heard that. Obviously, we need business. We need economic activity. But I'm afraid that just the fact that we have moved in this direction is, is going to make it very, as Alderman Franco said, very important uh, to monitor this. And that's obviously first your responsibility, Mr. Mayor, as Liquor Commissioner. And I think it's our responsibility as council members uh, to be in a position when the world opens up again, when, when these things are gonna happen, uh, to be able to monitor, to see how it's working, to see if there are changes that have to be made uh, at that point, you know, do whatever is necessary to make it the most uh, reasonable direction to go. Now, amazingly enough, I'm going to say I will vote yes overall. I've made my statements. I've supported the changes. That, that's not going forward. It's a case of probably I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. It's been about six, seventy three years since I had a case where I had a baby with bathwater, and I can assure you that I never threw the baby out anyway. But this is a case where I think we need to proceed because we've got a lot of elements here uh, that are gonna make some sense. Uh, and, and again, 
uh, the, the recognition that we have a real responsibility given the, the scope of what's happened in this uh, to monitor, to make sure it's working, to make sure it works best for our citizens in the long run. Uh, I was going to ask a question. I'll, I'll go offline with uh, Attorney Lang in regard to it. I, I really wanted a better definition of speakeasy. Uh, I know that I'm older, but I can assure you I've never been in a speakeasy, but I just really need to know a little bit better of what it meant by a speakeasy. So I'll, we'll take care of that at a later time because it's going to pass, obviously. Thank so you. Uh, thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, Alderman Buck. Yeah, uh, just briefly, um, I wanted to just put out there, I, I got together with a, a licensee, a liquor licensee, about three years ago with the concept. Um, we worked on it um, here and there, um, and we were came into RAP. Uh, we discussed that we were going to go uh, do some more research on it. However, uh, a member of our a mayor's office team, understandably, I got distracted and uh, had a, a young baby uh, a couple days ago. So uh, it did not get put uh, forth this time. Um, and of course, understandable. And we are uh, with her and her young baby. Um, but definitely, uh, as we continue to review, as I, uh, as I said, we've been looking at this for three years on this concept. I will uh, be pushing that immediately. Uh, as soon as uh, we're done here uh, with the clerk and with Ms. Lang uh, to get that matter pushed forward and resolved. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? There being none, clerk, you want to call the roll? Alderman Yamas? No. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Art Burns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lofshe? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. Okay. Okay. One no. 11 yes. Motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Clerk, can you read the next item under new business? 20-0078, an ordinance amending Chapter 8, Article 5 of the City of Aurora Code of Ordinances entitled Video Gaming. Is there a motion so to adopt moved. that ordinance? There's been a motion made by Alderman Hardburns. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Alderman uh, Jenkins. Uh, are there, before we go into questions and discussions, Miss um, uh, Lang, you want to just give a little bit of a background of what this is we're voting on? Yes, since we have changed chapter six, the uh, liquor code, the video gaming code um, needed to be updated. So this would be changing section 8 131. This pin's uh, dead. Um, to May 1st, 2020, and transitioning the licenses and changing it from the different classes, it, classes to the full service restaurant. Um, and as well as language and video gaming endorsement is described in chapter six. So it cleans up um, what we changed from the liquor code in chapter six to the video gaming. So it all works together. All right, are there any questions or discussions regarding this ordinance? There being none, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopshe? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Clerk, can you read the next item? 20-0098, a resolution approving a professional services agreement with Lane Christensen Company for the Water Production Division. So is there a motion? There's been a motion made by Alderman Jenkins, seconded by Alderman Hart Burns. Are there any questions or discussions? Do we have Dave Schumacher on the phone? Is Dave Schumacher on the phone? Who can give... Um, a little Ken background Schroff. on what this is. Ken, is Ken, Ken on the phone? 
Ken, I see Ken on you. Or Bob Lively. Yeah, yeah actually, Ken. I see Dave uh, just Can you hear me? muted. So there we go. Dave, yeah, Dave, go ahead, buddy. So the, the city has 15 deep and six shallow wells. Those deep wells have a pump setting about 1,000 feet deep. Um, those wells are mechanical equipment, and they need maintenance occasionally. Uh, and that's specialized work requiring a specialized uh, equipment. Only a few contractors work in Illinois that can perform this work, and one of which, Lane Christensen, uh, is located in Aurora and has been since the 1950s. Uh, now, long ago, the city standardized all well pumps and motors on oil-cooled flow-serve Byron Jackson equipment, and Lane is the sole source factory authorized rep in Northern Illinois uh, for these pumps and motors. So since 2012, the city have Lane and city and Lane have been in a professional services agreement, and this item is for an extension of that PSA. Now that PSA does provide benefits to the city. Uh, a couple of them I'll point out here is a 5% discount on published labor rates, as well as a 10% discount off specialized services such as well treatment techniques and well televising. Uh, Lane's, their primary service and technical support center for all of Northern Illinois is located at 721 West Illinois Avenue. That's in Ward 6, you know, about a mile and a half from City Hall. So this translates into incredibly fast service and great and a great in-town resource. So the last thing I'll say is that Lane and the city have had an excellent relationship for over 70 years. And this PSA provides economic benefits to the city while continuing that long-standing relationship. So extending the PSA is recommended by the Water Production Division. Thank you, sir. Any questions or discussion with the alderman um, based on the explanation from staff? There being none, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lofshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries. The resolution is approved. Clerk, can you read the next item? 20-0125, a resolution authorizing Stenstrom Petroleum Services Group to perform fuel dispensing system repairs and upgrades at the Aurora Central Fire Station for $54,605, plus a contingency amount of $5,460.50. So is there moved. a motion to approve? A motion made by Alderman Harbour. Is there a second made by Alderman Garza? Um, um, before I ask for any questions or discussions. Um, Ken Schroth, can you give a little background on what this is? Uh, yes, this is to repair the existing uh, fuels dispensary equipment at the central fire station. Um, this would remove the existing pump, take out the slab, and then uh, replace the risers that go from the fuel tank up to the dispenser, put in some, some new risers that'll be less likely to corrode and then replace the pump with software that will also uh, work in conjunction with the central garage fueling system so that if there's ever an issue at central garage, any city authorized vehicle could then also fill up at this location. So it's a great backup to the rest of the fueling capacity that we have. Thank you, sir. Any questions or concerns based on the explanation from, um, from staff? There being none, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries. The resolution is approved. Clerk, will you read the next item? 20-0174, an ordinance amending Chapter 6, Section 6A3 of the City of Aurora Municipal Code. So moved. There's been a motion Again. made by Alderman Hartburn, seconded by Alderman Jenkins. Um, before we ask for any uh, questions or discussion, Ms. Lang, will you um, state what this amendment is in Chapter 6? Yes, this is on section 6-6, restrictions on licenses, subsection 3. Um, basically, what we're asking is for language used by the state uh, local liquor or state liquor code 
Um, we're adding the language at the end, um, as far as a person convicted of a violation of any federal, state, or city law concerning the um, consumption, sale of alcoholic liquor, or a misdemeanor or traffic violation. Um, those people who wanted to be managers or owners of bar businesses could not get a license if they had any of that on their record. The state um, statute states at the end of the same language that unless a local liquor commissioner determines that such a person has been sufficiently rehabilitated to warrant the public trust after considering matters set forth in such person's application and the internal investigation, the burden of proof of sufficient rehabilitation shall be on the applicant. So get this um, still will be in the hands of the local liquor commissioner, but the applicant can provide proof uh, as far as the time frame and what they have done to rehabilitate themselves. So again, this is just um, updating the language to what the state has. Gotcha. Are there any questions or comments based on um, legal counsel's explanation? Alderman Yamas. I do have a question. Are there specific factors or guidelines in determining whether the person has been rehabilitated? Um, not necessarily on this. I, if you look further into the code sections, um, there in subsection four, it does talk about any person within five years. So those are looking at the other code sections you can pull off. Perhaps you have it at five years um, and tie that in to that determination for subsection three. But, but as far as any additional criteria, they are they aren't enumerated. Is that correct? Correct. Any other questions or comments, uh, Alderman Bug? Yeah, so after the liquor commissioner makes a determination, then uh, the whole overall license, it will uh, continue on its normal course. It will go to committee and, and, and go on for consideration. To city council. Correct, if they uh, pass all the requirements. Um, Thank you. Any other any other questions or comments? There being none, will clerk, will you please call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman, Alderman Franco, and your um, your mute's on. Yeah. So, um, we'll, all right. So it goes to the liquor commissioner as the mayor, and then it comes to us. Will we be? And they have some history of whatever. Will we be privy to that information so we can? Will we decide going forward we're on board with what what they've committed or what they've done in the past? John, you may be better at answering this since you bring those forth to city council. Sure. From um, from what I have seen so far, uh, no, that has not been brought up if we have had someone who has been rehabilitated. Um, but that's certainly something that we could do as long as the liquor commissioner is in agreement with that. So as of, as of it stands right now, the liquor commissioner makes a determination of whether or not there's been rehabilitation. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so I just want to go forward. So and I'm just throwing this out there. Ten years ago, a guy commits whatever crime. Basically, the mayor or the liquor commissioner decides he's okay. But what if an alderman or older woman has a problem? Is that even up for discussion? Or, I mean, is that just by the wayside? We'll never know. At this point, um, it has not been up for discussion. Only the mayor or the liquor no. commissioner has made that determination. Yes. Well, we never had this before, though. This is new. So we haven't really been in this book because it's not. It's it's not new. Uh, Deb, because I, I make these determinations right yeah. now. Deb, can you explain? Yes. So that process is already there. The ones that don't fit under subsection three have never been brought forth. But we have had um, liquor license app. Uh, applicants that have had um, something 20 years ago that have gone through the process. Uh, what is brought to city council are those people that have already been approved and pass all the requirements on section 6-6 as far as the restrictions of licenses. All right, well, because I'm reading, I'm reading in the background here and it says this portion of the code does not allow an evaluation to occur. So I just thought it, it may not have occurred in the past. That's why I was asking that question. So there are other sections of the code um, that do allow that evaluation. It has just seemed to be that uh, this was potentially an oversight at one point in time historically when the uh, code was put into place. Um, it, it really, you have the possibility for someone who has uh, an offense that is even a lesser offense than something that can be proven rehabilitated to the liquor commissioner that could be present 
um, under this section that would never even get a chance to be put before the liquor commissioner because that language was left out of the code. So this section of the code, we're just asking to add that language to allow the liquor commissioner to review uh, similarly uh, as in the other sections. Just like the state liquor code has as well. And I am assuming that other jurisdictions have also updated their code to reflect that. All right, with no further questions, clerk, will you please call the roll. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. Alderman Hardburns. Has there been any applicants that have come forth at this point? Um, I We do have an applicant currently, and that is um, how the attention was actually brought to this section. Um, we have an applicant who has a very minor offense that unfortunately fits into this section that um, he does have rehabilitation, he has the proof, um, and we want to have the opportunity to offer that to the liquor commissioner to review. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? There being none, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopchi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries, ordinance is adopted. Can you read the next item, Clerk? 20-0181, a resolution to use MDI Access Data Center Solutions, 123000 South Keeler Avenue, Allsup, Illinois, 60803, for the UPS battery and maintenance vendor for the UPS units at the Aurora Police Department, 1200 East Indian Trail, Aurora, Illinois, 60505, in the annual yearly amount of $62,300 from 2020 to 2024, totaling $311,500 over the five years. So moved. There's Second. been a motion. There's been a motion made to approve this resolution by Alderman Hart Burns, seconded by Alderman Jenkins. Before I ask if any questions or discussions, Mr. Pickies, you want to um, give a synopsis of what's going on here? Uh, yes, Mayor. Actually, I think this was submitted by Jim Birchall, <clears throat> the superintendent for Fleet and Silage, but it's with regards to establishing a contract for the maintenance and replacement of the interruptible power supply, the UPS batteries with, cap with capacitators and fans. These batteries are in need of a, a systematic replacement due to aging and near end of life usage. Um, the contract, as stated before, was over the four to five years. Um, and that is pretty much the gist of it. We want to make sure that we have a contingency in place to back up the uh, E911 dispatch center. Thank you, sir. Um, based on staff's explanation of what this is, are there any questions or comments from the council? There being none, will you, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hart Burns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopsy? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. <clears throat> Motion carries. The resolution is approved. Clerk, can you read the next item? 20-0186, a resolution authorizing the purchase of the maintenance agreement with Environmental Systems Research Institute Incorporated, ESRI of Redlands, California, in the amount of $39,587.67 for the annual maintenance of ARC Geographic Information Systems. So moved. There's been a motion made by Alderman Jenkins, seconded by Alderman Hart Burns. Before we go on to any questions or discussions, uh, Mr. Piggies, can you uh, give us a little background of what this is? Yeah, so the, um, the ESRI system is our ArcGIS system, which is our geographical information system uh, for working with maps and geographical information, which the city maintains. Uh, as an example, is the dashboards that Mr. Muhammad just went through is basically developed and managed within the ArcGIS system. Um, this quotation, or not the quotation, but the actual 
a resolution itself is for an annual renewal for that platform and to keep us current. Um, and it also helps us to establish the maintenance and support program for ongoing support of that. Thank you, sir. Based on the explanation from staff, does any um, alderman have any questions or comments? There being none, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Mesiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Harburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. Motion carries. The resolution is approved. Clerk, can you read the next item? 20-0212, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources to accept an open space land acquisition and development grant in an amount not to exceed $365,000 for improvements at Wilder Park. So moved. There's been a motion made by Alderman Hardburn, seconded by Alderman Jenkins. Um, before we go on to questions or comments, Mr. Uh, Dick, can you give a little background on that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll just briefly summarize this item before you. Um, this is regarding staff's request for you, the council, to enter an agreement with IDNR and OSLA grant to assist in the Wilder Park improvements. As you all know, the concept plan for Wilder Park has long been on the books for several years and has been shown as an extension of the River Edge Park. It's also tied to the western access of the new bike pedestrian bridge that's under construction. The concept plan that has been included in your packet illustrates the <coughs> park, including a new playground, a new restroom concession building, landscaping, lighting, and a new promenade in place of a portion of River Street. Last year, the city was successful in receiving a grant from the IDNR through its OSLAT program to assist in improving the park. The state's portion of that grant was for nearly $400,000. As part of the grant process, the state requires that we enter into an agreement to solidify our involvement in the grant program. Obviously, due to the virus, uh, we now know that providing our state, uh, or sorry, our city share of the grant this year in 2020 will not happen. Frankly, in today's world, there is also a strong chance that the state would also not be in a position to fund their portion of the OSLAD program. Because of this, we are working with the state and our representatives to extend the grant timeline so that we can then go out to bid next year and do the entire work in 2021 or later. <clears throat> Therefore, staff will not be going out to bid or doing construction as previously planned this spring in 2020. Our approach is instead to accept the grant in order to maintain good standing with the state. Essentially, this would be a placeholder agreement to, tabor, to save our spot in line for 2021 with an extension and contingent on funding from the state uh, and us later next year. Thank you, sir. Based on staff's uh, explanation, are there any questions or comments from the uh, Alderman, Alderman Seville? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of things I wanna commend uh, Trevor Dick and the city staff for working on this uh, and um, acquiring this uh, for our city. I think it's gonna be a good project. I just wanna reiterate, um, uh, to make sure that uh, we'll be moving forward in such a manner. I had an occasion to have a meeting with Trevor Dick and our first responders, and then I followed up with a neighborhood meeting at Fox Knoll to go over the, uh, the plan and the concept, uh, and also the concerns that uh, some people uh, had voiced and uh, want to um, uh, have insurances that uh, the first responders' concerns are still being met. I know this is the concept that we're talking about, but once we go out to bid, uh, and um, uh, so that's exact, uh, essentially what I'm looking for at this point in time. And maybe Trevor, Dick can uh, um, embark on, you know, say some assurances with regard to that fact. Yes, uh, thank you, Alderman Seville. Great questions and thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, that was a very great meeting that we had um, with the residents of that uh, complex. I want you to know that I have been in touch with the police and the fire, as is Alex Alexandru. And rest assured, we are making sure that it's going to be safe. that portion of River Street that can be closed is going to still provide emergency and vehicular access to the buildings, just as they are today, especially from the signalized intersection at Lake Street. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Alderman Lofty. So um, 
along what Alderman O'Connor said about being a contrarian, I don't really relish this, but um, I really don't know that this is a good time to spend $365,000 of city money because we have to match it, as far as I understand. I think Trevor's done it and the staff has done a great job with this, much like Deb did on the liquor. Um, I just think, as we talked about a little while ago with liquor, it's no longer business as usual these days. We have to really look at what's important to our residents. And the rationale for this is to, you know, be able to maybe have a farmer's market there. Well, we, we, we have a couple of good locations already. I think we have the train station, we have it where it was at the parking lot. We have Water Street Mall that we spent 275,000 on last year. As far as music, we, we should be supporting the venue. Uh, they have music, they have outdoor park, Monday Park, we have Millennium Park. I just, I think, I understand that the state doesn't like it when you apply for a grant and then you don't take it. I understand that. But I think that uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Lyons has given us a projection that we could be way under budget the next six months, like $30 million. And even if we do it next year, the question is, is this really a good use of our money? We all talked about with the liquor, helping our residents, helping the businesses. So I'd rather see if we're going to spend $365,000 to spend it, to give it to $30,000 to 12 restaurants as a loan or a grant than to build a park right now. I think we have to really look at what's important. And I just don't think this right now is. Alderman O'Connor. Two points. Uh, first of all, Judd, I've not received your application for the contrarian party. So you need to send that in uh, so it can be official. Um, secondly, I think Mr. Dick just explained that what we're doing is accepting it with the understanding that we're going to work really hard on getting an agreement to push it over or to be able to reapply next year. We, it may very well, well be that we lose the grant, but in effect, what's the problem with even trying when the commitment has already been made, we're not going to spend our money at this point. We're simply saying, Yes, we'll take that, but understand the conditions in which we're operating. Therefore, we ask you, the state of Illinois, for the following things. And I think Mr. Dick also indicated we're working through our, our representatives in, in the state legislature to try uh, to get this. And this is not unusual. I'm sure this is happening in every instance with these grants at this point. So uh, I think it's we're, with the commitment that we're not spending it, I, I think it's the only reasonable thing to do to try to stay uh, in, in the queue or in, in consideration by the state. Yep. All right. Any, no, with no further question, oh, uh, Alderman, I'm sorry, Alex Alexandru. Thank you, sir. I just want to reiterate, uh, this is really us <clears throat> holding our place in line, as Trevor indicated. No monies would be spent this year. And if history repeats itself from the past recession of 08, 09, OSLAD grants were held actually for several years. So there is no guarantee. And we are, I don't think we would have proceeded here if we didn't get positive feedback from our representative at, at OSLAD, who is closer to the realities of Springfield at this point. And so again, I think this is merely saving our place in line, so to speak, and, and then uh, see where it goes. Thank you, sir. All right, with no further questions, we'll, we'll, Mayor, we'll just Mayor. call the car. Right, go ahead. I have a question. So, uh, Trevor, are you saying that we won't have to spend the money next year either or ever? We might just get this as a grant or we or we'll have to match it at some point. Uh, Alderman, yes, the the goal right now is that we would not spend any money this year in 2020. The hope is that the city and the state would have the funds to do it and to do it next year in 2021. Um, that is the goal, yes. But as Alex just pointed, but hold on a second. But as Alex just pointed out, if there's any, if you look at history and any indication, if it's similar to 2008, 2009, the state held the ASLAG grant for close to two years. So just because we're holding our place in line doesn't even mean we're going to be able to do it in 21 or even 22. All we're doing is holding our, our place in line. And I think, Mayor, just quickly, the, the state realizes that times are going to be difficult next year, potentially as well. And so we would not be, if, if we couldn't somehow match it next year, I don't think under the circumstances, 
we're looking at the traditional penalty pre-pandemic where they did frown upon, and Alderman Lofty was correct, they, they have historically frowned upon people who don't follow through. But again, these are different circumstances. We're trying to cover ourselves as best we can and not lose the opportunity for the 50% match at some point. Wilder, just, let me just also remind folks, Wilder is the drop-off point of our brand new bridge. And so there has been, you know, again, pre-pandemic, we had some robust plans to really develop Wilder also as a complement to River Edge Park. And so Alderman Seville, I think, correctly pointed out the value of this to the neighborhood, uh, enhanced green space, and also as, as, you know, even the conversation, and thank you, by the way, Alderman Seville, the conversation that was had at Fox Knoll actually led to Trevor making some positive changes for the area on the grounds, including placing a playground for their grandkids and visitors. So again, we don't want to lose sight. We're trying to stay positive that, that once we get out of this, we're, we're not going to throw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater that Alderman O'Connor mentioned. Thank you very much. All right. All right, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yavis? Yes. Alderman Garza? Did we lose Alderman Garza? Yeah, go ahead, Alderman. We can hear you. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Messiacos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburn? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Buck? Yes. Alderman Lachi? No. Alderman Jenkins? Alderman uh, Jenkins? You're on, you're on mute, Alderman Jenkins. So you're on, there you go. Say it again. Yes. Okay. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 11 A's, one nay. Motion carries. The resolution is approved. Clerk, can you read the next item? 20-0245, an ordinance amending section 26-19 of the city code of the city of Aurora pertaining to disorderly conduct. So, so moved. moved. There's been a motion made by Alderman Howard Burns, second by Alderman Jenkins. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Veenstra, can you give a little background before we ask any questions or, or comments? Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, this proposal amends the existing ordinance which prohibits disorderly conduct to include in its prohibition the knowing disregard of a lawful order issued by the governor or a public health authority enacted to prevent the spread of any, any infectious disease. Disorderly conduct under the city code is currently classified as a misdemeanor one offense which is the lowest class offense available under our city code that would not change as a result of this ordinance. Thank you, sir. Uh, based on um, council's uh, recitations, quest uh, questions or comments, Alderman Franco. Yeah, I have a question for uh, Mr. Veenstra. So I saw a person the other day on a busy street on the median panhandling for donations. People, I actually saw somebody shocking to me, pull up, roll down their car window and give this person money. As I was debating this person and trying to explain to him the health hazards of doing this, my question is going forward, is that something, and I would consider it reckless conduct, the wording in here is reckless conduct, is that something we can mitigate now because of the governor's order? Because I just think that's it's a public health issue and I'm, I'm shocked that anybody would do it, let alone, you know, with money for it. Sure. Sure. With respect to the governor's order and even with this disorderly conduct ordinance, um, our ability to enforce is going to be, um, is gonna be subject to the protections afforded by the First Amendment and other constitutional rights. The courts have held that there is a right to panhandle and I would not see the use of this ordinance or even the statutory criminal offense of reckless conduct as a way to uh, prevent that from happening. Alderman Buck. Yes, so of course the governor said uh, that we wanna try and get people to comply. Uh, of course, that's our first standpoint, but from the, the police standpoint, um, where there could be compliance today at a park, at a, a skate park where there's a number of people there, uh, then the police officer comes back tomorrow and it's the same people there 
although they comply tomorrow to leave again. Uh, of course, does the, does the police at that standpoint have the discretion uh, that we have their repeat offenders, although they're complying each day, uh, that they can continue uh, with a disorderly charge? That, that's correct. The, the intent of the order right now is that it be enforced through voluntary compliance. And I know the police department is very strongly committed to working extraordinarily hard to secure that voluntary compliance. This would be the next step when voluntary compliance is not available, but the conduct hasn't risen anywhere close to a charge under the criminal statutes. So this is, quote, this is a middle ground approach um, that gives us an additional option. Thank you, sir. Um, in no, with no further questions or comments, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lofshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A's. We read the, thank you. Motion carries, ordinance is adopted. Um, clerk, we read the final item under new business. 20-0246, an ordinance creating section 2-82 of the city code of the city of Aurora pertaining to the authority of the city council to conduct public hearings. So moved. So moved. There's been a motion made by Alderman Jenkins, seconded by Alderman Hart Burns. Before we go into questions or discussion, uh, Mr. Veenstra, you want to give a little background on this ordinance? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, this uh, proposal clarifies, clarifies the right of the city council to conduct public hearings when those hearings are required by law and when the city council has the final say on those particular items. In many cases, the city council has delegated its right to conduct these hearings to advisory bodies or other committees. There may be situations such as we're in right now we're going to have that second body conduct a public hearing uh, wouldn't work very well given the practical considerations. So what effectively this ordinance does is it affirms that right which the city council has to conduct the hearings and also then um, has the administrative process to make sure that the other areas of the city code which may be contrary to that or, or which may expect the um, other advisory body to weigh in that those are superseded when the city council is exercising its authority. This is intended for extraordinary items only in very rare situations, such as where we are right now, or in other instances where there is a uh, real need or a very, uh, very defined purpose for the city council to conduct the hearing in lieu of one of the uh, advisory bodies. Thank you much. Um, are there any questions or discussion based on Mr. Veenstra's explanation of the ordinance? Uh, Alderman Dinell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Beenstra for uh, helping with some clarification today. Uh, as you all may know, I, I sat on plan commission for 25 years or over 25 years, and I value their work in doing public hearings. Uh, but I understand we are in difficult times now that we need to, to change up and be at least have the opportunity for city council to do that. And I, and I appreciate the extra steps that uh, uh, Mr. Beenstra went through to ensure that this was only for these special occasions and not meant to, uh, to devalue the work of plan commission and others. Thank you, sir. And Any Alderman other? Donnell and Mr. Mayor, just for the record, as I'm taking a look at the Legistar item, there were some changes that we did discuss today with Alderman Donnell and also with Alderman Masiakos regarding when this procedure would be appropriate. Um, as I'm taking a look at the Legistar at the moment, it does look like those particular items though were well, I did provide the red line to the, to the members of the city council. The text of what is in the Legistar does not appear to reflect those changes. In summary, those changes were the ability to move this, move an item to the um, city council for consideration would be held by the city council or except in the case of an emergency uh, by direction by the mayor. In all other cases, the city council would be required to act on that and additionally, the city council would have to, among the things the city council would consider would be the extraordinary nature of the situation, as well as other factors, including timeliness, the ability of that particular panel to conduct the hearing, 
a request by the mayor or by the chairperson of that panel or any other factor that the city council felt was relevant to uh, decide that matter. So what uh, you're being asked to vote on is essentially what was contained in the word document that was attached to the email I sent earlier today. Thank you, Alderman O'Connor. My question, Mr. Veenstra there on the basis of what you said, when does the city council have that ability to say, no, we don't want to have a public hearing on this situation? Would that be obviously two weeks in advance of when it would otherwise be set? The way the, the, way the process will work is the default, the normal, if nobody does anything, process will be to send the matter to the committee or a panel or advisory board, say, for example, the planning commission that the ordinance ordinarily requires. In the event that there was a desire to change that, it would be placed on the council agenda in the same way that you see the requests and referrals right now. The city council would then consider that as an item of business at that particular meeting. And if the city council saw fit that it wished to exercise its authority, uh, it would take that vote and then that matter would be transferred from that advisory panel to the city council for the purposes of hearing. In the case of the mayor acting in a, in a matter of an emergency, the mayor would refer it to the city council directly. I have additional question. Most of this work would probably be obviously items that were coming through the plan commission in the normal course, uh, development or other type of related. Uh, is, is there anything on the horizon at this point that you think that this is gonna start happening uh, without putting the plan commission back into operation? Uh, do we have uh, development proposals coming that we're gonna have to have public hearings um, at this point? Is there any idea? And, and again, it's related to, we have no idea when, when we're gonna sure. get back to normal, obviously at this point, but uh, the, is there anything out there at this point that we're gonna start to see these things appearing? Yes, the answer is yes. And that's actually what began this conversation. Um, the city council, I, I would opine, always has the ability to conduct a hearing. The difficulty is if there are other provisions of the ordinance that require that body to also weigh in on it, that does create some additional complications. There is an item which you're going to be asked to conduct a hearing on in two weeks that would be continued for, you, you can conduct the first part of the, meet, of the hearing next week in two weeks, and then two weeks thereafter, you would close the hearing to allow for additional time for the public to provide input. During that second time is where the city council would make the findings that would be required by law. And then the city council following the close of that hearing would make a decision as to the zoning relief that's being requested. So there is a particular item that it, that will be before you in two weeks um, that does require a degree of urgency that we normally wouldn't see. You should be receiving information from Mr. Sieben and his department on that very shortly. Well, my concern is um, if the time period stretches out here where we're gonna to continue to do our business in the manner we're doing it now, uh, if they're gonna to start to be accumulated some requests uh, for development or for getting into the whole process, I would think we'd wanna look carefully at particularly maybe uh, bringing the plan commission back into operation. They can operate the same way we're operating in the sense of, of, of their meeting uh, because what the benefit to the plan commission is obviously on some very complicated developments is that's another level of review uh, rather than just moving it right on through and then having us take a look at it. And, and this, this government obviously has operated effectively on those types of moves, movement of levels. Now, again, completely terrible times and different times we have to adjust to it. So obviously I'm gonna support this in order to, to give us the ability to take action but as I say, if it appears that we're gonna to continue to have to operate in this manner, uh, I would think under the conditions if other developers are gonna come forward or if other are gonna be projects that we seriously consider uh, putting the plan commission back into operation as, the, as the, the next level before it reaches us. I think that makes sense. Thank you. All right, um, clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Yamis? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Savell? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Buck? Yes. Alderman Lopsy? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 
12 A's. Motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Is there a motion to approve and pay the bills? So moved. On the agenda? Second. Second. There's been a motion made by Alderman Hartburn, seconded by Alderman Garza. Um, would the clerk please call the roll on the bills? I'm Alderman sorry, are there any discussions, or, are there any discussions or, or, um, on the bills? No, nope. with no discussion. Right, please call the roll. Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lofshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Yes. 12 A. Motion carries. The bills are approved. There being no further business to come before we'll the city council. The There's been a motion to adjourn by Alderman Hardburn, seconded by Alderman uh, Jenkins. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, we've just completed another successful city council by way of uh, video conferencing. So congratulations. And uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Um, you have a very good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We are, we are, Stay we are, safe. We are hereby Stay adjourned. Safe. All right. <laughs> All right. Stay safe. And you can stop the recording now. Thank you.